Okay, I have to say this at the beginning of the video. <laughs> um, I misspoke on my last video when I was talking about theological terms. I was reading about my paper. I totally got um, two things mixed up. I do this a lot. Um, so when I was talking about justification by faith alone, I was I was explaining that as if it was the priesthood of all believers. So I just wanted to let everyone know that I re recognized that when I watched it back. Um, I'm like, oh, that's not justification by faith alone. That's the priesthood of, of all believers. So I just, um, if you watch that back, you'll see how I'm explaining it um, in, in wrong. So justification by faith alone is just saying that, um, that there's nothing you can do to earn salvation and that um, it is faith alone that justifies us. In other words, faith in Christ. Um, there's no works that you can do in order to be justified. So I just wanted to make that distinction here real quick. Thank you. Hello everyone, it's Jacqueline April and I'm coming to you today with a trials playlist. I'm gonna try and keep this 10 minutes or less. Um, obviously not with all the songs, but I will put the links in the description of the songs that I am recommending. And then I'm also gonna recommend a sermon or two, I think two, um, just for you to get a taste of other, you know, if you, if you really are needing um, encouragement, you can use these sermons and then you can find other things based on those um, that could maybe help you. So, I mean, the Lord tells us we're all going to go through trials in our life. Some will stay around for a long time. Some, some will be hard. Some will be, you know, not as hard. But a trial is something that it... Um, it's, it's a challenging time in your life. And so I'm still going through that with the trial I was already going through. Now I have some other trials that are coming to me from, um, through people that I thought were friends. And so it's very bizarre. I'm still trying to understand all of this. Um, I know that people can get their wires crossed when there is misunderstandings, miscommunications, and so that's what I think is happening, but there's not much I can do about it if um, the other party only wants to listen to one story. So it's kind of like, you know, it, you know there's two sides to every story. So um, I just wish people would, would understand that and, and see that and it just, it blows my mind how things like this can happen. But I do know that God has my back. He's not going to let me fall if I don't, if, if I'm not doing anything that requires that. So that's where I'm at. Um, I know that God is covering me. And so, um, you know, people's opinions, that's all it is, is opinion. And opinion is actually the lowest form of knowledge, if you look it up. Um, it really doesn't mean anything. So you don't, I, I don't go by people's opinions because opinion is just some thought that somebody has. It doesn't really mean anything. So anyway, I'm gonna go into a little bit of an update here. So my classes are coming up very quickly. Um, because they are in the beginning of June, the two first weeks of June, which is actually only two months away now. So this has come very quick. Um, I, I find that the time between June and January is a lot longer. It seems a lot longer because I, I guess because there's so many other milestones in there. There's, you know, there's Thanksgiving, there's um, Christmas, there's all, all the end of year stuff. Um, but then the January to June seems to come a little bit quicker for some reason. So I'm coming up on that. Um, another little exciting thing that I have is one of the chaplains had, um, had been a professor at a college here um, a couple of years ago. And so they knew the hiring person. They knew the person that you need to talk to uh, because I had told them that I wanted to become an adjunct professor 
so that I could try it out, see how I like it, you know, um, get my feet wet in that and go ahead and, and teach a class or two to see if that's something that I really liked. And so they invited me to lunch with this other person and the whole lunch turned into a uh, an informal interview. And by the end of the lunch, they were like, okay, send me your info. I'm gonna tell my secretary to look for your name and you know, fill out all the paperwork as a formality. And basically they wanted to hire me. But of course I have to send all my transcripts because they have to know uh, exactly how many um, graduate courses I have in certain areas. So that's, it's, that's what it's based on. So you can only teach a class if you have a certain amount of graduate credits in that um, subject. So, um, so I had to send all of that. And then recently I heard that I'm at the top of their radar for the next adjunct professor. So I'm really excited about that because um, I'll be able to do that, see how I like it, you know, and see how that goes. Uh, and so I'm not really sure which classes. I heard that they were looking at me for maybe missions, um, international relations, things like that. So I really want to teach theology. So we'll see how, you know, maybe that will kind of segue into something theology, but it depends on what professors they have, what their needs are, what classes they're needing to be taught. So that's an update. I've thought about selling my rental houses. Um, um, between my husband and I, we have three. Um, one is basically more his, the other two are more mine. <laughs> Although we, I have an LLC, they're all in. Um, but I have thought about selling them. I've had so many things. It's just like every other month, there's something to do with the rentals. Um, let's see, last year, one of the main things is there was a leak in a water line um, and it was, we couldn't figure out where the leak was. It turned out to be underneath um, the concrete of the sidewalk and it was this big to do. They had to, they, they, at first they said, you need to bring, you know, a backhoe in here and we're gonna have to tear up your whole yard and all this. I was like, there's gotta be another way. So um, we figured out um, between me and this other plumber. Um, so first I had to hire a company that comes and does like a sound wave thing and they find out where the leak is. So we found out it was right under the concrete. So then they dug a hole like underneath on both sides in order to fix the leak without having to tear up the whole yard. So that was a thing. Um, the other rental house had um, water heater leak or it blew up or something and then it sprayed, you know, there was just it, it was wet in the garage and I had three um, single guys living there. So they didn't even use the garage. So they didn't even notice that it was that way until like, I don't know how long later. And so then they were freaked out thinking it's black mold. So I had to send somebody over there and the guy's like, no, April, it's just mildew because um, when the water heater burst, all this water like splattered on the walls. They should have opened the door and dried it out and all this, but they didn't. It was like a sauna in there, this whole thing. Um, so I had to replace the water heater. Then we had to get the walls painted and all this. And then now I've got a new renter in one of them. And she, I actually know her from college. So that's why I wanted her in there. We had an electrical thing. So I'm just like, how, how do we not know about this? But the electrical system hadn't been updated since 1972. That's the year I was born. I'm like, what? So the electrical was in a closet inside the house. It had to be moved because that's not code anymore. So then it had to be moved and grounded. So they needed new electrical. It had to be moved and grounded. So that was a very expensive little thing that we had to do. Um, then, you know, the stove doesn't work or, you know, the, the latest thing is the, um, garbage disposal. So I, it's, it's just always something. So I'm like, okay, Lord, do I, should I just sell these houses? I'm just so tired of dealing with it because I have, you know, other things that I need to focus on without focusing on that. So right now I'm, I don't know, I'm, I'm still thinking about and praying about what to do there. Um, 
So my oldest son is taking is part-time college right now. He finally found a part-time job. So I think he's taking three classes. Um, next year he is planning to take a full load, I think. Um, my brother has been staying with us. Um, he was in a really bad situation prior to this and I kind of pulled him out of that bad situation and he's been staying with me. He's not sure he's going to stay. He, he is kind of going different places. Before that, he was with one of my other sisters in Indiana for over a year and he's thinking about going to my sisters in Texas for a while but we like having him here. I, I like his company. My, my youngest son has got really attached to him and they help out each other out a lot and have kind of been there for each other. So it's really kind of neat to see how they um, interact. Um, I was gonna put books I'm reading. Right now I'm reading But God, um, which someone gave me. Somebody here in Oklahoma wrote this book. It's a pastor somewhere. I don't know, I don't know what other um, town he's in. I can't remember, but um, I'm writing another devotion. Uh, I haven't really been in touch with my writing coach for a while. He's kind of not with the same company that he was with. He kind of went out on his own, so it's a little bit different now with him. These are the songs that I'm going to put for your trials playlist. I think that anything that is worship, that is worshipful, can be for a trial because the best thing you can do is worship God and praise God whenever you're going through hard times because it's showing God that, hey, I'm going to believe you and I'm going to stand firm and my faith is going to stand strong in the midst of this trial. So the first one uh, is called Spirit Lead Me. This song is Fire. Okay, this song is fire. It is really good. It's the song is five years old, and I I just kind of latched onto it now. I don't know how it came up in, in in suggestions, and I really really like it. So it's talking about the Holy Spirit leading you. So when you look, hear this song and they repeat Spirit lead me a lot, the only spirit that we follow as devout Christians is the Holy Spirit. I just want to make that clear. So it's no other spirit, it's the Spirit of God, it's the Holy Spirit. That's the only spirit that we follow and that's what they're talking about in that song is Spirit Lead Me. Just just listen to the lyrics because um, basically it's saying that if you're led by the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, things are going to look a lot different than they do in the natural and so people around you may not understand the decisions that you're making or the things that you're doing because you are being led by the spirit now you have to know for sure you're being led by the spirit that's that's you know hearing god's voice 101 you have to know his voice and 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 the bible says my sheep know my voice so if you know that you're being led by the spirit then things in in the natural in your life are not going to look like people think they should or you know whatever the other thing i would say about trials is that um, trials can also come from a spiritual attack of the enemy so that's that could be its own uh, its own whole teaching video um, but if you if you can recognize if something is a spiritual attack or not, then you can do warfare, spiritual warfare. We'll leave that for its own video, but you can be, the enemy can attack, especially people that um, not can, he will. There's just no doubt about it that he will. If um, someone has dedicated their life to God and everything they do is for God and his kingdom, then the enemy is going to attack because he doesn't want them to make any strides in um, the kingdom of God. You know, if he can stop it, he's going to try. But that's why we have spiritual warfare. That's why God gives us weapons and tools um, spiritually to combat those things. Okay, so that was influence music. Spirit lead me, influence music. The next one is It Is Well. Bethel music and it is Christine DeMarco 
um, is the one that sings it. So this is It Is Well, if, as you've never heard It Is Well, because It Is Well is a hymn. Okay, so It Is Well, um, the lyrics are from Horatio Spafford. He was a successful attorney and real estate investor who lost a fortune in the Great Chicago Fire of 1871. Around the same time, his beloved four-year-old son died of scarlet fever. Thinking a vacation would do his family good, he sent his wife and four daughters on a ship to England, planning to join them after he finished some business at home. However, while crossing the Atlantic Ocean, the ship was involved in a terrible collision and sunk. More than 200 people lost their lives, including all four of Horatio Spafford's precious daughters. His wife, Anna, survived the tragedy. Upon arriving in England, she sent a telegram to her husband that began, Saved alone, what shall I do? Horatio immediately set sail for England. At one point during his voyage, the captain of the ship, aware of the tragedy that had struck the Spafford family, summoned Horatio to tell him that they were now passing over the spot where the shipwreck had occurred. As Horatio thought about his daughters, words of comfort, comfort and hope filled his heart and mind. He wrote them down and they have since become a well-beloved hymn. It is well. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to know, it is well, it is well with my soul. This is saying, perhaps we cannot always say that everything is well in, in all aspects of our lives. There will always be storms to face and sometimes there will be tragedies, but with faith in a loving God and with trust in his divine help, we can confidently say it is well, it is well with my soul. So this is, um, I think it's You Make Me Brave. It's it's like a combo of the song, it is well. So it, it is the best version of it is well I've ever heard. But the phrase it is well, it's like, Lord, no matter what storms we face, no matter what the enemy sends to us to try to derail us, derail us or no matter what we lose in this life it is well and that's what Horatio is saying here um, it is well with my soul in other words Lord whatever trials you're going to bring to me or whatever you're going to put me through whatever I'm going to go through on this earth it is okay and that's another way to put it it is okay because I know where I'm going and I know and like obviously he knew his daughters were in heaven he it, it was just like the most amazing way to view the tragedies that he had been through. It is well with my soul. So watch that and let that song bless you. Uh, the next song, Oh Come to the Altar, it is an oldie but goodie to me because I think this was recorded nine years ago, seven or nine years ago. It's Elevation Worship, but I think the version that I'm showing here is from one of the conferences. I think it might be Passion Conference, which is something I would love to go to this year. Passion Conference was so amazing and I would love to go to that. So, but Oh Come to the Altar, um, it's saying that, this song is saying that no matter what you've done, whatever sin you've committed, you can come back to the altar of God and God is going to cover you. God is going to re still redeem you. And, um, you know, you can, no matter what you've done, you can always come to God. He's always going to receive you. So that is a classic. It never gets old. I listen to it all the time. These are all songs that I listen to. Okay. That I, these are some of my favorites. When I, when I give you a, a playlist, it's, it's, songs that I really, really love. Okay, so the next one is going to be, um, I'm gonna put Honest Offering in there. That is Cain. It is a group of siblings, two girls and a guy. They're siblings and they formed a band and they're now on the radio and this is Honest Offering. It's a really cool song. It's not really I wouldn't consider it like a slow worship song. It's like a pray, more of a praise song, praise and worship. But it's 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 really cool. You'll you'll like that song, um, honest offering. And then the last one I'm going to uh, put in here is waiting here for you. This is um, Christy Knuckles, 
and I think she's singing at Passion Conference in this one. Um, so I don't know, Elevation, that might not be Passion Conference, but it's some kind of conference, but Christy Knuckles for sure was at Passion Conference. Um, and that was years ago too, but this one is really amazing song. She's the worship leader that I saw when I was in the Bahamas on that retreat thing. Um, like I saw her in person um, and um, I, I was so thrilled to see her, um, to be able to, to be there live. Um, so that's Christy Knuckles. And then the bonus, I'm only gonna give you one bonus song because let's see, one, two, three, because I gave you five, other songs, so I'm only going to give you one bonus song, but this is a Katy Perry firework. I've always loved this song. I love the video, and I feel that way in my and I feel that way myself because um, if you've ever heard of the fight or flight response, there's fight, flight, and freeze. I have the fight, so I will always fight um, for whatever it is in my life, and I feel like that's the message in that song. It's like, um, you're going to fight for, for everything in your life, but it's going to turn out right. It's going to turn out the way that you should, you should fight for it and you should continue going anyway. Just, just let that video, um, you know, kind of speak to you too. We all go through things in life and, um, we all have to fight for certain things. So, um, I'm glad I don't have the flight response. Um, I know people that do, and I know people that have the freeze. And so um, that's one of the things that has helped me in life, I think, is that I'm always going to fight for what's right and what I believe to be the right thing. So, um, okay, so I'm going to give you, I had it written down here somewhere. Um, the exact exact sermon that I wanted to put for you. Let's see. Oh, okay. So David Jeremiah, he's the one that I went and saw live also. Um, he is a famous um, preacher. He's on TV. His church is Shadow Mountain. It's in San Diego. And so when I took my kids out there to, to visit their relative on their dad's side um his their uncle took us to david jeremiah's church he's been in that church for 30 years or something and he's been on all the boards and stuff so we got to go to the church and that night um there was this really beautiful song that was sung i wish I, i'm gonna try and find that also that really touched me but so i've been to david jeremiah's church um, I'm going to post his sermon on God is in control, so you can enjoy that. And then I'm going to post Priscilla Shire. She is one of my absolute favorite female preachers. So there is a difference between a preacher and a teacher. I'm more of a teacher. So, but Priscilla Shire is definitely a preacher. And um, so the one I wrote down here was God is preparing you for more. So I'm going to find that. I will link that. So you'll have a link to David Jeremiah's sermon. You'll have a link to Priscilla Shirer's sermon. And then all of those beautiful songs. So whatever trial you're going through, um, hopefully this will be a lot of encouragement for you. A lot of encouragement for you. And I might even write some scriptures in there. Because we're all going to go through trials. There's no way that we can't. Um, and people may make up lies about you. They may say things about you that aren't true. That happens to me all the time. Um, I'm kind of used to it now. I don't like it. I don't think I'll ever get to a place where I like it and I think it's okay, but it happens. And so we all need encouragement. So you just want to make sure that the people that you're getting encouragement from are true and they're, they're real and, and it's a real message from God. So, um, thanks for watching guys. I hope these, I hope the playlist and all the encouragement helps you today and whatever you're going through and just know that God is with you. He will never leave you, never forsake you. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.